When I was a boy, my mother sat me down on her knee and she said, son, one and one is not two, especially when you're working with relativistic velocities. She said, if you got one velocity, well, here's the thing. If you've got two things that are looking at each other, this is when you use this equation. You got one thing that sees another thing going at a certain speed, and the second thing sees a third thing going at a different speed, then to find out how the first thing sees the third thing, you gotta use this equation right here. So this is relativistic velocity addition, and it guarantees that the velocity that the third thing sees is less than the speed of light. Even if this is 90% the speed of light, and this is 97% the speed of light, this is what I'm talking about is beta. We define beta to be the velocity of the thing divided by the speed of light. So I can talk about ratios, and in fact, everything cancels. These are such nice equations everything cancels and we can always talk about beta instead of v uh, as some fraction of the speed of light. So I'm going to go back and forth between those, but the point is we always make sure that the velocity that the first thing sees the third thing going is always less than the speed of light. But this is for velocity addition. What if I have a different problem entirely? What if I tell you that I've got one of these old school televisions and in the back there's a heater and in the front there's a phosphor on a screen and I'm planning to send some electrons in this direction. Uh, electrons are brown, right? Okay, so electrons are going this way, pew, and pew, and when they're through the acceleration stage, they're going really fast, let's say. So here are all my electrons zooming around, and I'll put them over here. But I want to say the following problem. What if, <clears throat> what if there's one electron right here, and the acceleration region, there's like a, an observation station back here. Somebody is watching the electrons go that direction. And they say, oh, this electron right here, the velocity of this electron, I see to be, mm, let's say, 98% the speed of light, right? But then there's this other electron that I just fired, and for some reason, maybe there was a glitch in the uh, electronics that accelerate the electrons. They probably, in a normal picture tube, all be going the same speed. But I'm gonna say, what if I also see this other electron that I just fired, and it's behind it and going a little bit faster. So I'm gonna say the velocity of this one, now very carefully, you have to be very careful. This is not the velocity of this electron this electron as seen by this guy, it's a single observer, oh boy, it's a single observer looking at both electrons. So now I say this is V because this is my overall velocity of this third guy as seen by um, an impartial or stationary observer. Boy, that sounded kind of stupid, a stationary observer. Okay, <laughs> boy, that's stupid. So the velocity of this other electron as seen by the So I got this uh, <clears throat> I got this entire city resting on an electron, and the whole point of me creating that city on the dreams and hopes of the proletariat is that these guys on Whoville would say, whoa, there's an electron approaching us rather fast, right? And you're looking at this and you're like, maybe Whoville sees this electron coming in at 1% of the speed of light. But I don't think so. It's gonna be a little bit different from that. But to do that, we have to say, oh, we know the velocity of the third party as seen by the first observer. We know the velocity of the second party as seen by the uh, stationary, stationary uh, impartial observer. But we don't know the velocity of the second party as seen by the first party. So I'm going to try to find V2, which brings us to algebra. Yeah, it's your favorite part of the show. So let's go to uh, solving for V2. Notice, well, I'm not going to tell you that yet, but let's solve for V2. I get 1 plus V1 V2 over C squared times V. I'm going to try to get everything with V2 on one side and everything with V1 on the other side. I'm going to distribute and, watch this, I'm going to distribute and move things from side to side. I mean, add and subtract them in one fell swoop here. I 
think yeah. that I'm gonna get a V. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Here comes Matt V, and then on this, see, this has got a V2 on it, so it needs to be on the other side. And it needs to be negative. So I'm gonna have a V2 over here minus V1, V2, V over C squared, and then I'm supposed to subtract a V1 because I don't want that right there. Matt, I've done it. Now let's look at each of these terms. Each of these terms has units of velocity. Velocity, velocity, velocity. Ooh, this has three velocities up top and two velocities down at the bottom. So we got meters per second all around and we haven't made any stupid algebra mistakes. Maybe we made some more subtle ones, but we'll see. Let's see. My next plan is to factor out a V2. So I get V2 equals, well, I guess that's going to be... <clears throat> Oh gosh, no, let's just, let's do the factoring step first. One minus V1 V over C square equals V minus V1. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to write it in a more beautiful way, solved for V2, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of math. V2 is V minus V1 divided by one minus V1 V over C squared. So the cool result is, let's get this little picture here of Whoville. The cool result that we have, ding! The cool result that we have is that Whoville thinks that this guy is coming at them faster than they would otherwise appear to if there weren't any special relativity. Of course, there is special relativity. So Whoville sees these guys coming faster than 1% of the speed of light because this, we got uh, 0.99 here, minus 0.98 would give us 1%. Then we divide by something that's slightly less than one. So we get an amplified difference in velocities because this denominator, oh, look at this denominator compared to the equation for velocity addition. Here's the velocity addition equation. It says V is V1 plus V2 over one plus V1 V2 over C squared. So this is addition and this guy is subtraction. And that's interesting, I think, because this one is making sure that you stay below the speed of light, because this denominator will always be greater than one. This one is making sure that you take into account the speed of light for these apparent velocities as seen by different observers. And so it's actually amplifying subtraction and reducing addition. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. So we got this. <laughs> We got this relationship right here, and I'm about to tell you what those velocities are. Uh, I uh, turn on my calculator. I'm gonna change my batteries when I feel like it. And my plan is to take 0.99, whoop, better put some parentheses around it. Put right, oh my gosh, braces, <laughs> where am I, Great Britain? 0.99 minus 0.98, and I will open up some new parentheses for my denominator. One minus, ooh, V1 is 0.98. 0.98, and then I multiply it by V, which is 0.99, 0.99, and then I close my parentheses. I don't need C because I'm, I'm using betas effectively, not the Vs themselves. All right, and I get, whoa. I get 33.6% the speed of light. V2 for our problem is 0 0.336 the speed of light. Ding! So Whoville says, wow, this electron is pro approaching at 33.6% the speed of light. Whereas a stationary observer might stupidly just subtract them and say that's only a 1% the speed of light difference. Whoville knows better. Whoville knows you better get out of the way of that electron right there. This implies something about this second electron's energy. Maybe this electron has a whole bunch of energy. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. Look at this equation right here though, before we close. This example, I want you to look at this equation right here. This equation is symmetric in V1 and V2. So when we did this math right here, we were saying that we knew V1. We could just as easily have said we know V2. It's all about who's observing what. I think of it like this. I think of it like V1 has an observer. V2 has different observer. If they have different observers, then you know V1 and V2. If you have only one reserve, uh, observer, let's see, here's my hint. Only one observer for your problem, then you've got V1 and V, you need to subtract. 
I hope this helps you out because I would get confused on these things all the time when I was taking my first special relativity course. So good luck, practice lots of problems, you'll begin to understand the pattern of this. This, this is just algebra, but it is really fundamental to the operation of the universe. So practice it and you will become better, goodbye.